speaker is living in the line of fire. Mr. Houston Cypress is a, a, a member of the Otter Clan of the Miccosukee tribe. Uh, he's also involved in Love the Everglades movement, uh, which just had a rally last Saturday down in the Everglades that uh, was very, very successful. An awful lot of people got together and had the opportunity to share ideas and to, and to find common, common needs and common solutions. And, uh, and the Miccosukee tribe has some very, very serious concerns about how this is all being done. Uh, they're, they're afraid that the cart is going to be put in front of the horses and they're going to end up getting dirty water uh, into the, the Everglades itself. And of course, they're being poisoned right now through the L-28 interceptor canal. Uh, that is just outrageous that the state of Florida is allowing this to happen and isn't making it stop. So with that, please welcome Mr. Houston Cypress of the Otter Clan. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, can I take y'all's picture? Yeah. <laughs> I want to show my grandma all the cool, amazing people that are dedicated to clean water and restoring the Everglades and building friendships and alliances with all the communities. So again, I want to thank the Rivers Coalition, the River Warriors, and most importantly, I want to thank all the volunteers here. Let's give them a hand. Um, I want to thank y'all for the invitation to speak with y'all today, to communicate with y'all, to have dialogue with y'all, because it's a really big honor to do so. I'm also excited to be able to connect with all of you, even under these dire circumstances. The matters that bring us here is that I found it necessary to participate in these efforts to restore the Everglades because it's where my home and my heart resides. It's where my clan and my community, the Miccosukee tribe resides. So in my lifetime, I've seen many destructive changes to our lands, such as the disintegration of the tree islands out there, those hammocks, where our villages are, where the animals live, where we have our gardens, I've seen the disappearance of the game animals, the increase of the pollution in our waters, and the erosion of these Everglades. Because our culture is so tied to the land, our ceremonies, our medicines, and many other spiritual practices, we are witnessing the gradual disappearance of our culture. In essence, we are losing our roots because of the degradation of the Everglades waters. But we know that there is hope. We can certainly steer things in the right direction, but it's going to take incredible coordination and resolve to manifest our dreams and our goals. Love the Everglades movement is also a spiritual movement, and this is where our spirituality comes in. Personally, I don't believe that spirituality is something that is superstitious or hollow. It's not self-promoting, it's not self-serving, and these are not cliches that we're talking about here. This is about wisdom, insight, strength, which all of you all have here today. Yes, we are talking about the long term, so this is also about patience, trust, and compassion. Even in the face of great uncertainty, even in the face of potential doom, these are the qualities that we need. So, you look at history, we've had many great sages that have explored the struggles of the human condition in such a mysterious universe. Our spiritual leaders throughout time have shown us by peering deeply into our very being and our place in this universe that there is much to learn for the sake of our global as well as our local ecosystems right here, right now. So with Love the Everglades, the movement here, love is central to our cause because we do not want to be ruled by fear or anger. In fact, we cannot afford to be mindlessly distracted given what's at stake and the amount of time that we have to make things right. So we know that anger and fear, especially in a crisis situation like this, it can galvanize some people. But it can also blind us, it can also divide us, and perpetuate the delusion 
that we are factions bent on defeating one another. And these are what undermine our important efforts. In getting to know some of you, I've heard from you about other groups involved in this issue, and sometimes these comments have been disparaging. We're supposed to be the solution to this problem. Otherwise, our division end up being the poison in the water. As each and every one of you know, we do not have the luxury to bicker, but we can overcome this. In fact, we must overcome this. As someone with an outside perspective, this entrenched riff is a little off-putting, but it's also all too familiar. I sympathize with you even as I am critical because our tribe has been witness to this entrenched bickering, and what this does is it slows down Everglades restoration efforts to a glacial pace. So how are we gonna overcome this bickering, this factionalism? Well, love and respect is a good place to start. We have, we have youngsters here. We have a lot of young people here. We have the river kids here. And let's give them a hand. So because of these youngsters here, we got to show them a good example. Let's show them how to have a civil and civilized dialogue with one another. Let's also continue to have forums like this for discussion so that we can increase understanding of our concerns, our priorities, and our proposals for action. Let's ask for help from our friends, friends such as you here. And let's not be afraid to disagree. Let's welcome disagreements and critique as an opportunity to learn where our proposals can be strengthened and improved. Now let me offer an example of constructive critique within a context of civilized discussion. We're talking about Plan 6 and the Southern Flowway. This is a very important proposal, but it's also got definite room for improvement. We're talking about the Holy Lands. This is an area that's designated as OFW, Outstanding Federal Waters. From what I've read on Plan 6, and from what I'm hearing today, there is still not enough discussion or information about this important area, the Holy Lands. This area has very stringent regulations, and what Plan 6 would be doing is bringing more water at a reduced quality than is currently allowed and protected for in this area. So the question that Plan 6 must answer to move forward and with broader support is how do you propose to degrade these outstanding federal waters with water from Lake Okeechobee? That's the question that we have to answer and articulate so that we can all get behind it. Now, I also have a request from y'all. I need your help with something. Um, Marty Baum, our Indian River Keeper, was just talking about L28 Interceptor Canal. It's a serious problem, and I need your help with that. We have all been disappointed about the failure of the Central Everglades project, planning project to move forward. That was a big disappointment. But it still, even if it did go through, it did not do enough because we're talking about this L28 interceptor canal. The SEP project was supposed to bring new waters into the system, but it didn't address the 40% of waters still coming in from the L28 interceptor canal. And the Miccosukee tribe and the people that live there are analyzing the waters coming out of this canal on a regular basis, exceeding 100 parts per billion of water, and more than that sometimes. And this is an ongoing problem which needs your help. So I'm asking for your help to raise awareness on this issue and to push for action to solve, to solve this problem with the L28 Interceptor Canal. That's my request for you today. Yeah. And as for the factionalism within these communities, well, the movement Love the Everglades is going to work from a place of love and respect with each and every one of you. We're not going to take sides, but we're going to continue to express our love and respect for these waters. We're going to pray for the purity of these waters flowing from the Kissimmee River Valley through Lake Okeechobee, over the River of Grass, and out beyond Florida Bay. We're going to pray that compassion flourishes in the hearts and minds of the decision makers, as well as the stakeholders of Everglades Restoration, and we're going to pray that the community that's concerned with Everglades Matters continues to grow because the Everglades Matters. 
So we will stand with you in prayer for the integrity and vitality of the circle of life. These are the challenges that we are called to meet with grace and diplomacy, and we will stand with you. Thank you very much for your time.